Hey everyone, this week we're going to create a film photography look on a digital image using only Lightroom. With analogue cameras having a bit of a revival, more and more people are wanting to do film photography. And that's to create a timeless look in their image or a very nostalgic look or a particular vibe or mood that film photography is very good at. But why might you want to create that look in a digital image. Well, A, you might not have access to a analog camera. B, you might not have time because it does take a lot of time to go out, get the images, process them, get them back and scan them, do whatever you need to do. Or C, you might just want to be creative and learn a bit more about Lightroom and things like that. So today I'm going to show you some techniques that you can use to create a film photography look in your digital images. Now I'm not going to tell you how to create a specific film look. So there are lots of different films out there and cameras and they'll all create different looks. Some will be warmer or cooler, they'll have more contrast or less than another film or more grain or whatever it is. I'm just going to tell you how to tweak certain parameters which will help you to achieve the particular look you want. And then you're going to have to analyze the films that you like and try and apply some of these techniques to create that effect. So let's jump in and have a look at how we do this. Okay, so this is the image I've chosen to work on. I captured this in San Francisco at the Fortune Cookie Factory. And the first thing I'm gonna do is crop this. So if you really want to go for that printed film look, you might want to choose a standard size like four by three or five by seven. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna crop this to how I like it how I think it works best. And I'm gonna concentrate on creating the film look with the sliders and the colors and tones and things like that. Also, if you're going for a Polaroid, you might want to go for a square format, for example. But that's gonna do for me. And now I'm gonna to come to the temperature and tint sliders. So different films, different cameras are gonna give different effects. Some are gonna be warmer, some are gonna be cooler. Some will have greener tints, some will have more purpley tints. For mine, I'm going to go towards the cooler end of the spectrum. And I'm going to bring the tint more to the greener end. So the next parameters I'm going to look at are the tone sliders. And in particular, we're going to concentrate on the contrast in our image. So Again, with different films, different cameras, you're going to get different effects. Some of the effects I like best are where you've got strong contrast, so really rich blacks, particularly when it's printed in a glossy format. And sometimes you get the highlights slightly blown out with film. I don't mind that. If it's a good image, if it's a strong image, I don't mind slightly blowing out the highlights just to give that film effect. But we'll see how this one turns out. So I'll start to bring the exposure up, not too much, round about there. And like I said, I want to bring more contrast into this, so I'm going to bring the contrast slider quite far up. Highlights I'm going to leave for now. Shadows, I might just bring them up just a touch. I'm not going to do them too much because I'm going to play around with the whites and blacks. So I think, first of all, I'm going to bring the blacks right down to make those really nice and dark. And this is way too much for a digital image. But since we're going for that film look, this is really going to help. And I'm actually just going to bring the whites down a touch. Not much, just to about there. Okay, so next up, we've got the presence sliders. So a lot of the time with a digital image, you might want to bring these up, sharpen it, bring more clarity and texture into your image. With this particular image, I'm going to bring it down. But that's not to say that film cameras can't produce a really clear image that's really sharp, but there are a lot of older cameras as well that are just, and older lenses that just aren't as sharp and don't have as much clarity. So I'm going to bring these down about there just to soften it very slightly 
Dehaze, I'm not going to play with that. And next up, we've got Vibrance and Saturation. I'm not going to use the Vibrance slider right now. I'm going to just stick to Saturation. And I'm actually going to bring that down a little bit. Not a lot, just to about there. Next, we have our Hue, Saturation and Luminance panels. So I'm really going to play around with the colours a bit now. And this is just personal preference, really. So there's no exact science here, unless you're trying to recreate a very particular film look for a very particular type of film. Um, but either way, you're going to have to play around with these until it matches what you want. So it really is just trial and error. And I know pretty much what I want already because I've actually done this already behind the scenes and I know what, <laughs> what colours I want. But I can do it quite quickly now just to put it to where I want. So that's my general colour edits, hue, saturation and luminance. But where the magic really happens is with colour grading. So this is really powerful. We can change the colour of our shadows, highlights and midtones. So if we start with shadows, we want to bring this circle out from the centre of this larger circle with the colours in it. And as it gets to the outer edge, that colour will become more intense. And as we move it around the circle, we change our hue. So I want a pinkyish purple colour for my shadows. So round about there, I think. I don't want it too intense, so I'm going to bring that back to the centre slightly. So around about there. Next I'm going to go to Highlights. So with this one, I want to go again for a pinkish colour, but not quite as intense as last time, so probably about there. And I really don't want to introduce much of that. So very, very, very slight amounts of that one. And next up, midtones. With this one, I'm going to go for more of a blue colour. So round about there, I think is OK. And bring back the saturation to around about there. And if I turn that on and off, you see that really does make a, a difference to our image. So that was before, and this is afterwards. It's really added some bluish turquoise tints to these metallic areas. It just gives it that vintage vibe. And we're just going to tweak these settings by Firstly, bringing up the blending to 100%. So that's just how much of the effect we've got blended into the image. And then balance is which end of the scale we're going to use, basically. So more of the shadows or more of the highlights. So I'm going to bring it to around about there. So it's biased slightly more towards the highlights. Okay. So sharpening and noise reduction, we don't really need those for this because what I'm going to do next is introduce some grain into the image. So with a digital image, you're often trying to avoid too much noise in your image. However, when you're trying to emulate film, introducing grain can really give it a strong film effect. So I'm really going to bring that up to around about there. And then we can change the size of that grain. So this will depend on the size of your image. If you've got a very high res image, you'll need to bring up the size. So I've got the Z7s, quite a lot of megapixels. So I do really need to bring that up to around about there. 
And now if we zoom in, you can see what that's done. So let's turn that off, that was before. And now we've got that really nice grainy effect. So quite lo-fi, but really does help to give us that film look. And there we go, I think that's the final image. So there you go, I hope you found that useful. Remember, if you can get out with a film camera, it can be really fun and much more rewarding to create your images that way than it is to apply the effects to a digital image. I made a video a little while back where I was trying out film photography for the first time. I'll put a link up top to that one if you haven't seen it. And I also talked about how I'd been passed on this Minolta SRT303. And I still haven't got out and made a video with this yet, but I am hoping to do that soon, probably in the new year. And it's really fun to use, and it can be, like I said, really rewarding. So have a go at this, doing it the digital way, but also, if you can, try it with a real film camera. And that's about it for this video, so I hope you found it useful. Like I said, if you have, please just give me a thumbs up down below. Thanks a lot for watching. If you regularly watch my channel, I massively appreciate it, so thanks a lot for that. And if you are new to the channel, and you're not yet subscribed, and you'd like to do so, you can click down there on the big red button, or over here on this picture of me, and that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. So I hope you'll catch me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.